We have already stated that the rainbow is a reflection. We have now to explain what sort of reflection that is to describe its various concomitants and to assign their causes. Sight is reflected from all smooth surfaces, such as our air and water, among others. Air must be condensed if it is to act as a mirror, though it often gives a reflection even uncondensed when the sight is weak. Such was the case of a man whose sight was faint and indistinct. He always saw an image in front of him and facing him as he walked. This was because his sight was reflected back to him. Its morbid condition made it so weak and delicate that the air close by acted as a mirror, just as distant and condensed air normally does, and his sight could not push it back. So promontories in the sea loom when there is a southeast wind, and everything seems bigger, and in a mist, too, things seem bigger. So, too, the sun and the stars seem bigger when rising and setting than on the meridian. But things are best reflected from water, and even in process of formation, it is a better mirror than air, for each of the particles, the union of which constitutes a raindrop, is necessarily a better mirror than mist. Now it is obvious and has already been stated that a mirror of this kind renders the color of an object only, but not its shape. Hence it follows that when it is on the point of raining, and the air in the clouds is in process of forming into raindrops, but the rain is not yet actually there. If the sun is opposite, or any other object bright enough to make the cloud a mirror and cause the sight to be reflected to the object, then the reflection must render the color of the object without its shape. Since each of the mirrors is so small as to be invisible, and what we see is the continuous magnitude made up of them all, the reflection necessarily gives us a continuous magnitude made up of one color, each of the mirrors contributing the same color to the whole. We may deduce that since these conditions are realizable, there will be an appearance due to reflection whenever the sun and the cloud are related in the way described and we are between them. But these are just the conditions under which the rainbow appears. So it is clear that the rainbow is a reflection of sight to the sun. So the rainbow always appears opposite the sun, whereas the halo is round it. They are both reflections, but the rainbow is distinguished by the variety of its colors. The reflection in the one case is from water, which is dark and from a distance, in the other from air, which is nearer and lighter in color. White light through a dark medium or on a dark surface, it makes no difference, looks red. We know how red the flames of green wood is. This is because so much smoke is mixed with the bright white firelight. So, too, the sun appears red through smoke and mist. That is why in the rainbow reflection, the outer circumference is red, the reflection being from small particles of water, but not in the case of the halo. The other colors shall be explained later. Again, a condensation of this kind cannot persist in the neighborhood of the sun. It must either turn to rain or be dissolved, but opposite to the sun there is an interval during which the water is formed. If there were not this distinction, halos would be colored like the rainbow. Actually, no complete or circular halo presents this color, only small and fragmentary appearances called rods. But if a haze due to water or any other dark substance formed there, we should have had, as we maintain, a complete rainbow like that which we do find lamps. A rainbow appears round these in winter, generally with southerly winds. Persons whose eyes are moist see it most clearly because their sight is weak and easily reflected. It is due to the moistness of the air and the soot which the flame gives off, and which mixes with the air and makes it a mirror, and to the blackness which that mirror derives from the smoky nature of the soot. The light of the lamp appears as a circle which is not white but purple. It shows the colors of the rainbow, but because the sight that is reflected is too weak and the mirror too dark, red is absent. The rainbow that is seen when oars are raised out of the sea involves the same relative positions as that in the sky, but its color is more like that round the lamps, being purple rather than red. The reflection is from very small particles continuous with one another, and in this case the particles are fully formed water. We get a rainbow too if a man sprinkles fine drops in a room turned to the sun, so that the sun is shining in part of the room and throwing a shadow in the rest. Then if one man sprinkles in the room, another, standing outside, sees a rainbow where the sun's rays cease and make the shadow. Its nature and color is like that from the oars, and its cause is the same, for the sprinkling hand corresponds to the oar. 
that the colors of the rainbow are those we described and how the other colors come to appear in it will be clear from the following considerations. We must recognize, as we have said, and lay down. First, that white color on a black surface or seen through a black medium gives red. Second, that sight when strained to a distance becomes weaker and less. Third, that black is in a sort of that negation of sight. An object is black because sight fails. So everything at a distance looks blacker because sight does not reach it. The theory of these matters belongs to the account of the senses, which are the proper subjects of such an inquiry. We need only state about them what is necessary for us. At all events, that is the reason why distant objects and objects seen in a mirror look darker and smaller and smoother, why the reflection of clouds and water is darker than the clouds themselves. This latter is clearly the case. The reflection diminishes the sight that reaches them. It makes no difference whether the change is in the object seen or in the sight, the result being in either case the same. The following fact further is worth noticing. When there is a cloud near the sun and we look at it, it does not when there is a cloud near the sun and we look at it, it does not look colored at all but white, but when we look at the same cloud in water, it shows a trace of rainbow coloring. Clearly then, when sight is reflected, it is weakened, and, as it makes dark look darker, so it makes white look less white, changing it and bringing it nearer to black. When the sight is relatively strong, the change is to red. The next stage is green, and a further degree of weakness gives violet. No further change is visible, but three completes the series of colors as we find three dozen most other things, and the change into the rest is imperceptible to sense. Hence also the rainbow appears with three colors. This is true of each of the two, but in a contrary way. The outer band of the primary rainbow is red, for the largest band reflects most sight to the sun, and the outer band is largest. The middle band and the third go on the same principle. So if the principles we laid down about the appearance of colors are true, the rainbow necessarily has three colors, and these three, and no others. The appearance of yellow is due to contrast, for the red is whitened by its juxtaposition with green. We can see this from the fact that the rainbow is purest and the cloud is blackest, and then the red shows most yellow. Yellow in the rainbow comes between red and green. So the whole of the red shows white by contrast with the blackness of the cloud around, for it is white compared to the cloud and the green. Again, when the rainbow is fading away and the red is dissolving, the white cloud is brought into contact with the green and becomes yellow. But the moon rainbow affords the best instance of this color contrast. It looks quite white. This is because it appears on a dark cloud and at night. So just as fire is intensified by added fire, black beside black makes that which is in some degree white look quite white. Bright dyes too show the effect of contrast. In woven and embroidered stuffs, the appearances of colors is profoundly affected by their juxtaposition with one another. Purple, for instance, appears different on white and on black wool, and also by differences of illumination. Thus, embroiderers say that they often make mistakes in their colors when they work by lamplight and use the wrong ones. We have now shown why the rainbow has three colors and that these are its only colors. The same cause explains the double rainbow and the faintness of the colors in the outer one and their inverted order. When sight is strained to a great distance, the appearance of the distant object is affected in a certain way, and the same thing holds good here. So the reflection from the outer rainbow is weaker because it takes place from a greater distance unless if it reaches the sun, and so the colors seen are fainter. Their order is reversed because more reflection reaches the sun from the smaller inner band. From that reflection is nearer to our sight, for that reflection is nearer to our sight which is reflected from the band which is nearest to the primary rainbow. Now the smallest band in the outer rainbow is that which is nearest, and so it will be red. And the second and the third will follow the same principle. Let B be the outer rainbow, A the inner one. Let R stand for the red color, green, G for green, V for violet. Yellow appears at the point Y. Three rainbows or more are not found because even the second is fainter, so that the third reflection can have no strength whatever and cannot reach the sun at all.